Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. Today's video is dedicated to the S rank selector, some tips that I want to give out. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. First things being, if you go right here, this is where the S rank selector is probably going to be in your inventory. Now you probably can claim it either via the mail if they hand it out for free, or if you jump into the profile right here, this is going to be a code section. You input the codes and then it will give you an S rank selector in case you're wondering how to input codes within the game. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the actual S rank selector. Here are going to be the five units and if you're wondering it's the same thing as in global so the first character being nanami right here lee entropy kamui live luminance karenina and then so on and so forth those are going to be the five different characters and here are the five characters now before you pick any of these characters and you're like i'm going to pick live because she's a support and i feel like i need a support and supports are great go ahead and jump back go into the main menu right here going to the beginner banner and the thing that i want to take a look at is by going right here into the second section and here are going to be all the different six stars within the beginner banners or s rank heroes all right so you can see kamui live lee karenina and then nanami now when it comes to this you could possibly get a dupe of one of these characters early on so you don't want to like jump into the beginner banner you pick live and then you get a dupe of live from the beginner banner so you might want to hold off on using your s rank selector because if you get a dupe of one of these characters i'm pretty sure that's going to be huge feels bad because try out different characters before you just jump in and like you know get the same character this is something that i want advice folks before like you just use the s rank selector because you just want a waifu or his bondo next thing here is going to be like some rates in case you're wondering but just note the biggest portion is this is going to guarantee a s rank hero at 40 poles so no matter what happens you will get an s rank hero at 40 poles which is absolutely amazing one of the things that some others might like advise you for the s rank selector is not even using the beginner banner and possibly going on to one of the main banners and then pulling for alpha which is going to be one of the first units that you get from like the actual banners but before we jump into like you know the different characters let's go ahead and stick to the topic and talk about the s rank selectors all right and on the google spreadsheets here's going to be the priority ranking for the s rank selector this is by whiskey titan and before like everyone's like whiskey titan why'd you pick this or bork why are you like advocating for this dude he's an experienced player and after going over like all the stuff that he said i highly agree with this and just note like this is based off of if you're a meta slave you want to pick like based off of efficiencies and you want to tackle certain zones with like the proper typings and elements and all that stuff you don't have to follow this he even says like in the video whiskey titans like you don't have to use like this s rank selector sort of diagram in case you want to like use lee because he's the funnest character that you feel or you want to use carrie nina because she's like the funnest character this is based off of the fact of their different elements and their specific usages based off of the different types of gameplay all right what do i mean by that because that's a lot of like words right so if you jump here this is going to be rexlance google spreadsheets this shows like all the different information so make sure to check him out shows like all the different things where it's like when is like the first character going to be coming like on launch they got s rank alpha so that's going to be like actually the main character that you want to have let's go ahead and jump into their different skills now when it comes to kamui he's going to be a great sword user his first red orb attack is just going to be a cross slash and then his yellow orb is going to be a charge it can actually immune impairment so he's going to have like super armor while he's like in this charge form because he's immune to impairments while charging and then he's also well it's not specifically super armor but essentially he won't be disrupted while charging and then he's going to have like this blue orb ability where he launches a target and it's going to be like a sort of spin ability all right and what's really cool is that his ultimate also lends him the shadow form which lets him do more dark damage all of his abilities when he's in a shadow form it'll go from 800 percent to 1200 percent damage 600 percent damage to 950 percent and then 480 percent to 720 percent so his shadow or dark Dark damage is going to be absolutely massive compared to his base form which is like 40 to 160 percent so this is one of the biggest reasons as to why you would pick up kamui is because all of his abilities deal dark damage and you want a dark damage dealer for the war zone where you can take advantage of his dark typing if you actually look through all the different heroes there's not going to be very many characters that have like elemental typings as you can see with like lee and live they don't have any typings and that's like one of the biggest factors as to why they're not in the top contenders because they're there's going to be a lot of different characters that have 100% physical and because of like their typings and their little elements that's the reason why they're like above it has nothing to do with like actual gameplay it has nothing to do with like usability it has everything to do with the fact with their elemental type all right so let's go ahead and talk about Karenina and why you would be looking at her now the cool thing about Karenina is she's fire we know that but she also has a super armor on her red orb which is absolutely phenomenal so whenever a character gets super armor essentially they won't be disrupted while they're doing hits and stuff and then 
then her yellow orb is going to be a leap. So she's going to be pretty much jumping forward. She's also going to be reducing the damage that she takes. So she can essentially like leap into the battle, go into her super armor form. And then her blue orb is going to be an AOE, which is going to be really nice. Overall, her kit is just built for dealing damage, which is absolutely amazing. And then her ultimate skill, she's going to be launching a laser at everyone's faces. Pretty phenomenal character, I have to say. It's just super built for like dealing damage. And so Nanami is going to be the only S rank fire tank. And she also comes like with this chainsaw sword, which is really fun to use. You actually get B rank Nanami absolutely for free. So you can sort of test out normal Nanami to see if you will get like some sort of like liking to her S rank version. Just note that S rank versions play completely different from their B rank versions. It's just like something to look into in case you like that weapon type, the chainsaw sword. It's really cool about her red orb is going to be a rush. And then her yellow orb is going to be a flip forward. And then her blue orb is going to essentially give her a buff and it's also going to be interrupting incoming attacks. I feel like she's going to be like really useful for just spacing herself and sort of just disrupting the opponents. She's a little bit more fun as a tank to run because she's going to be faster with the chainsaw sword. The only reason why I say that is because Kamui or the dark unit, he's going to be running a great sword. And with a great sword, he's only a smidge bit slower. Very, very small, like fractional. All right. One of the things before we cover Liv Luminance and Lee, we got to look at the typings for the future characters. So you can see Alpha, she's going to be 100% physical. So she has competition with Lee. Then Bianca is going to be physical and lightning. And you have Lucia Plume, who's going to be ice type. You have Rosetta, who's going to be physical. She's going to be the best armor type, like generally through the game. And then you have someone like Luna, another dark type, finally. And then you have someone like Krom, who's going to be ice type. And then finally Vera, who's going to be a lightning type. So as you can see there, there were not very many fire type units within the game. And that's why you would want to have the fire duo. So for the situations where you need fire units, then you could use them. But honestly, if you're good at the game and you don't care about the elements, then you could just run Lee the entire time, or you could just run someone like Alpha the entire time because, you know, physical damage is just balanced. But just note that elemental damage is obviously going to make things easier for particular stages because you will deal higher damage. All right. So that's the reason why these three units are going to be recommended is because their elemental damage that they're going to be dealing is very unique and not a lot of characters will have it S rank. All right. There's no other S rank fire character that I know of based off of Rexland Sheep, but maybe there are newer characters that appeared. I'm not sure. All right. Throw that out there as a disclaimer. The next thing being is Liv. Now, the reason why you would pick Liv is because you just want an easier support to run. The thing that I want to talk about the most, though, is if you jump into the main menu, you get normal B rank Liv and B rank Liv is just as good, in my opinion. And you don't really need like an S rank like support in the game because her skills are just as great. Like this is going to be her red orb where she pretty much deals damage. I believe her blue orb, this is going to be a heal, which is pretty decent in my opinion. And then her yellow orb is going to be like a sort of like dark hole ability. So it sucks the enemies to that specific location wherever you decide to cast it. Obviously her S rank version is going to be really stellar. Like she's going to fire a beam cannon and she's also going to be reducing enemy movement speed. And then her yellow orb is going to be dealing additional hits with her basic damage. And then finally her blue orb is going to be dealing some particle damage. And it's also going to be doing like a pull effect. But honestly speaking, she's also going to be a pretty great healer overall. Just note that every single time you cast a three orb, or if you do like a five judgment ray, you are going to be healing everyone for 60% of Liv's attack. So whenever she's going to be casting a three orb, she's going to be doing some heals. Honestly speaking, use someone like Liv in case you want an easier time sort of healing yourself. And of course, she's going to be a little bit better. But just note that you can S rank normal Liv. So you don't have to use S rank Liv because eventually you'll get enough shards to S rank this version of her as well. But at the end of the day, if you just want an easier time, to, then you get S rank Liv. All right. And then finally, there's S rank Lee. The only reason why S rank Lee is at the bottom is mostly because Alpha is here. And Alpha is like the best physical damage that we'll have in the game for quite some time. If you don't like Lucia Alpha or you don't like Crimson Abyss Lucia, then that's the only reason why that you would run someone like Lee or Lucia. I, I should correct my pronunciation. But just note that Lee essentially has his red orb where he's going to be leaping forward or it's a rush and dealing a small AoE, which I really like. And then his yellow is going to be another rush. It's a little bit different. This one's an actual like jumping into the fight. This is him just like leaping into the 
air and dealing like an AoE damage. It's not really a rush, by the way. And then finally, his like shoot and energy particles sort of deal. I like it. It's sort of like a suck in some way or a pull. But honestly, you can sort of argue with me like it's actual usages. But Lee is going to be a dual wielding pistol character who's relatively fast and you can't go wrong picking him up. And the only reason why he's last is because Lucia Alpha exists and Lucia Alpha has an AoE on her red orb. She's going to be flashing past characters with her yellow, sort of like that samurai sort of deal where you flash behind a character and you like cut them in half. Her blue orb is essentially a buff and it's going to make her deal additional damage. And she's just a like goddamn beast. Like seriously, she has a sword wave on her core skill, which makes her look like she's Virgil. And she's probably like my favorite like S rank unit. That's the only reason why I wouldn't use Lee. If Alpha didn't exist like at launch, then I would 100% like forego this entire thing because I saw Lee, I like played with Lee and I was like, Lee seems like the boy. He seems like the Zbondo to use. But then I saw Alpha and everything changed. And I was like, this is the one that I definitely want to like re-roll for or try to acquire. Just note that on her banner, she's probably going to be acquirable for 60 pulls versus the 40 pulls on the beginner banner that we talked about earlier. All right. If we're going to go by how quick, then I would say like Lee and then Karenina are like the two faster characters, Nanami being a close like second to them and then Liv and then Kamui being like right behind them as they're technically really fast characters as well. Liv being more of a distant character and then of course, Kamui being more of an in-your-face character, right? Like Liv is like the only one that can sort of keep somewhat of a range. And she's sort of like floating around the battlefield in some ways. So she's a very interesting character. I like her gameplay style. She's probably like the most unique. If you wanted to like main DPS with Liv for some reason, could do that. I don't know why you would do that. But yeah, when it comes to this, you know, feel free to follow like this meta version of the S rank selector. They're going to be very good for specific types of situations where you can take advantage of dark damage take advantage of fire type damage or you need to take advantage of the best well not the best but the only s rank support that we know of but those are going to be all the different details for the s rank heroes that you get from the selector honestly you can't go wrong with any of them just go with what you want at the end of the day things like this are going to be debatable where there's a lot of skill involved when just playing this game credits to whiskey titan for creating this if you made it this far consider subscribing dropping a like leaving a comment follow me on twitch follow me on Twitter. Once we hit 25,000 subs, we're doing a giveaway. Thank you to Rexlint for, you know, showcasing this information and making this public. Thanks so much for watching and have yourself a fantastic day. See ya.